What's up Simonics and welcome back to a new quick win. Today we're talking about all things speech. So we're gonna implement two things, two plugins in our Ionic Capacitor application. Number one, we're gonna inject text to speech. So we're gonna have a simple string and it will be quite easy to let our phone talk that string. Number two is speech recognition. So we're gonna be able to press a button, then the plugin will listen to anything going on that we talk about, and we will hopefully get back some clean results that we could then again feed back to the speak, text to speak. So basically, maybe we could even produce something that could talk to itself. Hmm. Could be possible, but not today, maybe. For the whole procedure, you can find, as always, link below the video, all the source code for Ionic Academy members. And if you're not yet an Ionic Academy member, go check it out right now, ionicacademy.com, my place to help you with everything Ionic. But now let's get started and implement those two plugins really quickly in our Ionic Capacitor application. All right, let's get started with our application. We're gonna start as always with a blank Ionic Angular application and we're gonna install two packages for our uh, functionality. We need the text-to-speech package uh, and we need the speech recognition. Afterwards, I recommend you run the first uh, Ionic build uh, because otherwise you can't add the native platforms and then after the build you can actually add them. So let's take a quick look at them. Uh, we're gonna use text-to-speech and speech recognition. Both are part of the Capacitor community. Um, they get quite a few stars and I think at this point they've reached a good level of maturity. Um, so for text-to-speech, we still need a bit of customization and then we should be pretty easily able to uh, call the plugin and speak something. Um, as far as I know, the API is only available. Uh, it's not in here uh, for iOS and Android, so not the web. Uh, same for speech recognition. There's actually this overview, so only Android and iOS. Um, besides that, this should be pretty easy as well. Also, just a few functionalities. So let's put this to the side and go first of all through the customization or the actual uh, setup because for iOS, we need to open our info plist. You could do this from uh, Xcode as well. Uh, so you could go to app, app, info plist and add it in here or you can just open it uh, through your favorite IDE like I did in here. What we need to do is we need to add two keys. We need the NS speech recognition usage description and the NS microphone usage description. I always like these <laughs> words. Um, so go ahead and put in a reasonable description because uh, otherwise Apple might actually reject your app. This is only necessary for speech recognition. Um, for text-to-speech, there's nothing we need to do on iOS. On Android, we also need a um, few changes. First of all, we need to go to the Android manifest file. Actually, we only need that file. And we can put in this little block, which will add... Uh, let's f do a bit of formatting. Uh, well, let's keep it like it is. Uh, the text to speech service and the recognition service. Uh, I found that this was required since, I don't know, SDK level 11, something like this. Um, so definitely make sure you get this in place as well. And finally, another permission. Uh, I would add this below here, uh, simply because we already got the uh, internet permission here from Capacitor, the default. So then also add the record audio. And then with those changes, I think we're ready. And we can dive into our homepage. So um, let's say we're gonna have a little text in here. And we can actually do the um, speak text functionality pretty easy. The only thing we need to do is we need to import text to speech from the Capacitor Community plugin and call the according function open install. Mm, actually not sure what this installs uh, with our options. So if you wanna keep it really, really easy, just put in the text like this, this dot my text, and then you're already done. Uh, let's head over to the homepage real quickly and add a little button down here. So this one should speak our text and then let's take a look at this. I'm gonna try and turn up the volume of my device. So probably, 
Yeah, of course. Ah, uh, yeah. If I'm connected to the screen, it won't show. But if I disconnect it, um, that's a hard choice. I can either show you the view or you can listen to it. <laughs> Uh, damn, I'm gonna quit this because you've seen the app. So let's give it a try now. Today is a good day to learn Ionic. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I'm gonna show it like this to you. It's gonna be horrible, but anyway. Um, which means we're already able to use text to speech. Uh, pretty cool. We're not even, I think, five minutes. Yeah, not even five minutes in this video, and we can already use text to speech. Um, that's what I really like about some capacitor plugins. They are super easy to use, and they have a pretty cool functionality. But let's now also put in speech recognition to the mix because speech recognition is actually maybe even a bit funnier. So let's do the speech recogn... Uh, let's select this one. Uh, make sure you get the import right from the Capacitor community. And within the constructor, we're gonna first of all check if we get the permissions and we can just do this by calling request permissions. As far as I know, this is only uh, required for Android. So if for whatever reason you're just building for iOS, you most likely don't need this. Um, then we can create two functions. We're going to add the start recognition function. And if we have a start function, we also have a stop recognition function. This one's pretty easy. Uh, we will just set our recording variable to false. We'll just manually manage this. You can also um, do this with a little pop up. I'm going to show you with the settings. Um, but we're going to do the, the old school manual way. And then you just call the speech recognition. I'm going to copy this. Too many imports. <laughs> speech recognition stop. This will stop listening. But more importantly, we want to start something. Before we start it, um, you could still use a query to check if the feature is actually available. Um, just to make sure you're not calling something and then relying on a result that's not going to come at any time. Uh, you can do it like this. And if it is available, we're going to use speech recognition start. This is the most important function, just like the speed, uh, the speak function for text to speech. So within start, we can pass actually quite a few options. Let's check them out here. Um, so we got language, we got maximum results, we got a prompt, partial results and pop up. Especially prompt and pop up. Um, they work together and I think they only show on Android. On iOS, it will just listen in the background on Android. This will actually show a Google overlay and the results captured. So you don't really need this. And I'm going to also set it to false because I noticed some problems with pop up true on Android. Um, we're going to keep partial results because this will automatically give us the latest results from listening. And I will try to use my best English US accent. Uh, for maximum results, um, I'm going to leave it out for now because I don't think we have to pass it, but we definitely want this uh, event listener. So this is the listener that gives us the partial results. Um, and we're going to do a little separation in here. But first of all, can we somehow connect to this? Um, probably do. Where's the inspect app? Um, because... I might be able to actually get the output. Yeah, it's from the, oh, I didn't use it. Oh, that's great. Okay, sorry, I had to log in and install everything. We are also now getting this again because we need to create a little UI. We're gonna keep the listener like it is for now. We're gonna implement it in a second. Uh, for now, let's continue with this. Um, I'm gonna also add a little uh, input up here. So if you want to, you could also just put in your own text and then speak it. Um, but more importantly, we want to add two more buttons. Button number one to start our recognition, which will only be showing uh, or coming up if we're not yet recording. Second button, uh, of course, the opposite. This will show if we are recording and then it will stop the recognition. That's how we want to call it. Okay, that's everything we need. Let's put this a bit to the side. Uh, yeah, thanks. We don't need Xcode. Uh, won't hurt, but still don't want it. Okay, let's try. Um, um, whoa, 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 wait. This, is this actually running my code? I don't feel like. Um, because start speech recognition. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> 
Um, the UI for some reason here isn't updating yet. Um, but we see all these partial results coming in. Ah, I didn't set the speech to true. So this dot recording equals true. Great, good. We forgot about that. Now it should work. Let's see. Hello, my friend, what's going on? And then we see um, a lot of text. Actually, this is from the last time. It should work. Team, hello, my friend. <laughs> I should really have this speech recognition uh, running all the time. Um, we had an error, ongoing speech recognition. Yeah, there was probably a problem, but that shouldn't be a problem now. Anyway, uh, what's more important, this is the partial result, and you see it is captured all the time while speaking. So we're gonna do a little check if we get any kind of results in here. So if we get data.matches and data.matches.length is greater than zero, then we can be pretty sure that um, we got some result. So let's, in that case, store our value and let's give it another try. Let's give this another try. And we see it actually did record my voice in here, but it's not updating immediately. And whenever you see something like this, Paired with an event listener with promises or callback functions, you know the view is simply not updating. So in that case, just inject the change detector detector ref from Angular. And when you want to update the view, just call it uh, with detect changes. So that should get rid of the problem. Let's do this. Now everything should update automatically. And there we go. If I click speak text, it would now actually speak this text if I wasn't connected <laughs> to the view. Um, we see from the partial results, we actually get uh, multiple results here. So I think usually the first result is the one with the, uh, the biggest likelihood of being correct. Um, but feel free to test this with, uh, with other or saying something strange. Uh, then you could see the difference between the matches. Also, if you're using this on Android, an important note, at the time using the plugin, I had to use this little uh, change here for Android. And I can show you exactly why this is the case. So if I inspect the speech recognition uh, source code, I can see that on iOS, the core resolves with matches and some results. Now, if I inspect the code for the speech recognition on Android, we're gonna see that it's some line exactly here. It will put value to the output. So the output object has this value block. And therefore we can't use data.matches on Android, we had to use data.value. Um, to show you the version I was using, version 2.1.0, Probably it's gonna be fixed in the future, but in case you don't get um, any data back on Android, it might simply be the problem that you're accessing the wrong uh, element from the partial results. So um, check out uh, the data object that you get back. If it doesn't have a matches uh, property, uh, it should have a value property instead. So you can see the block is pretty much the same. Um, and then it should work. For speaking the text, just a quick addition. Um, there are actually many more options like the language, the rate, the pitch, the volume. We've played around with this in the past and you can certainly do this. Um, it's quite funny to change it. In the end, you will just come back to the default language uh, uh, and rate anyway. Uh, you can try to get the supported voices, which didn't return anything for me on iOS. Might be the case that this is only supported on Android. Um, it did definitely get um, supported languages uh, that work for me. Um, so feel free, those, all of them are pretty easy to use. Um, just access the text to speech element or object and then you see get support language, get supported voices and that's all you need. You can also stop uh, speaking the text uh, in case you want to read like long messages to your users and give them an option to stop them, but that's pretty much it. For the speech recognition, again, if you're using the pop-up on Android, you're gonna see a different view, but I think stopping the recognition won't work. Um, so I had to use pop-up fault. And of course, make sure you get this in place. But otherwise, this should be fairly easy to implement and then you can basically build a talking bot with your Ionic capacitor app.
All right, and that's it for today's quick win. I hope you enjoyed it. I think the usage of those two plugins is pretty straightforward. If you encounter any problems, especially on Android, uh, make sure you check out the latest versions of the plugins because I also had some uh, problems as you have seen with the pop-up flag or also uh, with the key of the data.matches, data.value. So just make sure you're on the latest version and then uh, check out if there are any issues. But otherwise, the implementation is really, really easy and you get a great functionality that you can easily include in your Ionic Capacitor application. If you enjoyed the video, of course, also make sure to check out the other videos on my channel, hit the like button and stay subscribed for all the upcoming Ionic videos over the next time. So. I hope you will have a great day and build some epic Ionic applications and I will catch you next time, like always. So, happy coding, Simon.